everyone and welcome back to another week of our lessons. Okay, so before we get started with today's lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Okay, so let's take our hands together, bow our head. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to teach these children today. Lord, I pray that you be with all of us. Help us to learn and understand more about your word every day. I uh, pray that you be with each family. Help keep us safe. Um, I pray that you be with the children watching the video today, that they are um, listening, learning, and that they will be able to remember these stories. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's review what happened last week. So remember, there was that big, tall idol that King Nebuchadnezzar wanted all the people to bow down to. And then did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did they obey? No, they did not obey the king. They obeyed God. They did not worship that false god. So they were thrown in the fiery furnace. But King Nebuchadnezzar, he noticed how God protected them and kept them safe. Now, to, one of today's lessons is going to be about King Nebuchadnezzar and about a dream that he had. So we're going to find out how Daniel helped King Nebuchadnezzar understand his dream. Okay, so now we're going to talk about King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Okay, so he had a dream about a really tall tree. Now, this is a tall tree, but whoa! That's a really tall tree. And in his dream, there were fruit in the tree and there were birds in the tree and there were even animals living around the tree, right? And something happened and someone came and chopped down the tree. <gasps> oh, but do you know what was left? Just the bottom of the tree was left in the ground. Now that had a special meaning too. He could not figure out what that dream meant. So God had sent a message to King Nebuchadnezzar, but he just couldn't figure out what it meant. He asked all the people around him, what does this dream mean? They couldn't tell him. So he reached out to Daniel because he knew that Daniel, well, God was using Daniel, right? And he knew it. So he asked Daniel, what does this dream mean? And do you know what happened? Daniel told him, that this dream represents you. You're very prideful. You think, ooh, I can do this. I want to do that. I'm in control of all of this, all around him, his kingdom, right? But that's not really what was going on. The king, he was being very prideful, right? Only worrying about himself and getting what he wanted, right? Now, Daniel, being a very loving man, he reached out to him and said, King, please, please change your ways. Humble yourself. Do the right thing. But the king didn't want to. He didn't think that what God said was going to happen would really happen. Hmm. But we know that when God says something will happen, it will happen, right? Okay, so let's see. I have my Bible, and I'm reading from Daniel chapter 4, verse 20. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 30. And it's kind of a long one, so make sure you're being a good listener, okay? Okay. And the king answered, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power, as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty? Now, while the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, it is, oh, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and you shall dwell among the beasts of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Oh, wow. Okay, so God said, you're going to eat 
grass like an animal. You know what? Do you remember that picture from before? Look at this. <gasps> There's King Nebuchadnezzar and he's, ooh, look at him. He looks like an animal. Look at his long fingernails. Look at his yucky gross hair and his clothes are all tattered. His mind, he's thinking like an animal. He's eating like an animal. But do you know what? God said after seven periods of time, you will realize that God is in control of all things, that God is sovereign. So for this first lesson, the first lesson about King Nebuchadnezzar, what did God want him to learn? That God is sovereign, right? God is in control over everything and everyone. Okay, so this is what God wanted King Nebuchadnezzar to learn. Do you think he learned it? You betcha. Okay, now we're ready for our second story. Okay, this story is about a new king. A king that came after King Nebuchadnezzar. And one day, this king, his name was Belshazzar. He was having a party. He had lots of friends come over and they were eating food and they were drinking wine and they were worshiping false gods. Ooh. Okay, so they were doing a lot of things that were not pleasing to God, right? Now, one day at this feast, the king asked for something. He asked for a special type of cup. Ooh, do you like my special cup? Now, what made this cup special was it was used for worshiping God, our God, and celebrating him and worshiping him. But do you know what they wanted to do? They wanted to put wine in it and worship their false gods. Ooh, oh no, that's, that's not good, right? How do you think God would feel if he saw these people using a cup that was supposed to be used for worshiping him for worshiping false gods. Let's read our Bible and find out what happened. Okay, so this is from Daniel 5. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall in the king's palace, opposite the lampstand. And the king saw the hand as it wrote. The king's color changed. And his thoughts alarmed him. His limbs gave way and his knees began to knock together. <gasps> okay, so here's what happened. The king was sitting there drinking from the cup and worshiping his false gods. And then all of a sudden, <gasps> there's a hand on the wall. There's no body, nothing around. And it's writing something on the wall. <gasps> okay, so... God is trying to send a message to the king, right? But the writing on the wall, the king had no idea what it meant. And just like King Nebuchadnezzar, he reached out to all the people that he knew and none of them knew what it meant. So who do you think he went and asked? Daniel, you're right, because God was still using Daniel to tell people about his message, okay? So... Daniel told him what it meant. Daniel said, look, you're making God very angry. He doesn't like what you're doing. You're not doing what he tells you you're supposed to do. And do you know what will happen? You will be punished. Now, what do you think the king thought about that? Do you think he believed him and turned from his sinful ways? Or do you think he still believed that he was in control? and that he would not be hurt. He thought he was in control. He was still being very prideful, right? Like King Nebuchadnezzar was towards the beginning. But do you know what happened? One night, later that same night after Daniel told him what would happen, the king died. Yeah. So what do you think the king, uh, God was trying to tell the king before he died? Well, he was trying to tell him, look, God is sovereign, right? God is in control. 
over everything and everyone. You are not in control, King. God is in control of all things, right? And that's what we need to start understanding too, right? Are we in control or is God in control? God is in control of everyone and everything, right? Yes. Okay, so we're ready for our third lesson. This is our last lesson. It's about another king, King Darius. Now this king came after King Belshazzar. And King Darius, he really liked Daniel. He thought Daniel was a really cool guy. But there were some people who did not like Daniel. And they wanted to get him in trouble. But they couldn't figure out how to get Daniel in trouble. The only thing they did know was that Daniel prayed to God three times a day. So they started thinking, hmm, how can we trick the king into getting Daniel in trouble? Ooh, so they had an idea. So one day they went to the king and they said, oh, king, you are so powerful. You're so mighty and in control. Don't you want people to only worship you for 30 days? Isn't that a good idea? And the king thought to them, Yes, that sounds like a really good idea. I want people to know that I'm in control, that I'm in charge and how mighty and powerful I am. Yes, let's do that. But what would the punishment be? Hmm. Well, we were thinking, why don't you just throw them in the lion's den if they don't obey, if they don't only worship you? And the king thought, hmm, you know, that's not a bad idea. Sure, let's do that. And so do you know what they did? They signed a law. They said, okay, so now for the next 30 days, if you don't pray and worship the king, you're going to be thrown into the lion's den. Ooh. Well, this is a problem for Daniel, right? Because does God want us to worship other people? No. So, hmm. Either Daniel would obey the king and worship the king for 30 days, or Daniel would obey God and pray to God and worship God. Hmm. What do you think Daniel did? Well, he was praying to God. He was at his house praying outside his window. And do you know what happened? Those leaders, they saw Daniel praying. And do you know what they did? They went to the king and they tattled on Daniel. They said, oh, king, didn't you say if anyone doesn't pray to you and worship you for the 30 days that they would be thrown into the lion's den? And the king said, oh, yes, yes, that's what we said. That's the law that we said. Well, do you know what, king? We saw Daniel. He was praying to his God. He was not praying to you. And do you know what? The king was kind of in a pickle. Oh, no. Well, Daniel's my friend, and I don't really want him to be thrown into the lion's den. But I have to do what the law says. I got to do it. And so poor Daniel, he got thrown into the lion's den. Now, that kind of sounds scary because what do we know about lions? Well, we know they have rah, big, sharp teeth, right? Rah, rah, rah. Ooh. What would happen to Daniel once he's in there? Well, he'd probably get eaten, right? Because, well, what do lions do? They eat things, right? So let's find out from our Bible what happened. Let's see. Oh, so the king is telling Daniel this right before he gets thrown into the den. It says, may your God whom you serve continually, deliver you. So King Darius was saying to Daniel, Daniel, I hope your God saves you. Because he doesn't really know. He doesn't know that God is in control of all things yet, does he? No, he doesn't know that. So the king actually goes home and he's like lying awake all night because he's a little bit concerned about his friend Daniel. Well, Daniel is in the lion's den all night long. Ooh, let's think about that. He'd be in a cave and it'd be dark and 
there'd be scary things all around them. Okay, so let's think about this for us. Have you ever been lying in your bed at night and started hearing noises around you? And you kind of start getting a little scared? Well, the next time you're lying in bed and you're feeling a little scared, I want you to do something. One, I want you to remember this story because Daniel had scary lions all around him, right? But do you think he was scared? He wasn't because he knew God was in control of all things. He didn't have to be scared of those lions, right? So, one, remember this story, and two, pray. You pray to God and you say, God, I know you are in control of all things. Please help me sleep, right? And your heart might still be pounding and you still might be a little scared. But just remember, Daniel wasn't scared. And he had big, scary lions all around him, right? Rawr, rawr, rawr. Okay, so back to the story. So the next day, the king is a little anxious. He's got to know what happened to Daniel, my friend, right? Okay, here's what the Bible says. Okay. At the break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. So that means he was running really fast. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king, the king declared to Daniel, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you've continually been able, uh, have served continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? to hear if Daniel would respond. And guess what? Daniel responded. Here's what he said. O king, live forever. May my God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. And they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king. I have done no harm. Wow. Okay. So think about this from the king's perspective. Okay, king. Okay, my friend was thrown into the lion's den and he would surely die, right? But that's not what happened. God showed the king that he is in control of all things, right? God is sovereign, right? God is the one who's in control over everything and every one. So the king learned the very special message that God was sending to all in all three of these stories, right? We have learned that God is Okay, I didn't hear you say it. You're going to try it again. God is sovereign. You're right. God is sovereign. And what does that mean? God is in control of everyone and everything, right? So this was kind of an easy, what did we learn about God this week, right? Because, well, one, it kept coming up over and over and over, right? But this is a big one to try to learn, okay? So when you come back, I have a fun snack for you, okay? We'll see you in a minute. Okay, so for snack today, we are going to be making a lion rawr, 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 out of fruit, right? Now remember, God sent an angel, and what did the angel do? He closed the mouth of the lion, right? So the lions didn't eat Daniel. So we're going to make a lion, and if you want to make a roaring lion, you can, you'll just have to get creative. But here, if you come on down here, you can see all the different fruits you need. So you need an orange, and I already, it's like a little baby orange, like the cuties, and I, I already peeled all those parts apart. And then I have some black raspberries, a strawberry, some grapes, and a very big apple. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the apple, and you're going to cut it, into a nice little apple slice, just like this. 
and that's the lion's face. You're going to take the orange pieces and put it around so that looks like the mane. Let's see here. Oh, I guess I don't need that one. And then you're going to take a strawberry for the nose. I'm going to cut some of this off. There we go. There's the lion's nose and some blackberries for the eyes. Does that kind of look like a lion? A little bit? Oh, there we go. Oh, one eye is a little bigger than the other. There we go. Okay. And then you're going to take the grapes. You're going to cut them into little bitty slivers. You're going to make the mouth. Yay! Okay, what do you think? Do you like my lion? Yeah? It's pretty cute, huh? Okay, ooh, what piece to bite? I'm going to lift up the whole head part. Uh-oh, you can't see the mane, can you? No, but that's okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed our lessons this week, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye!